Hey, what is up guys? Tech Cycles here and this is the 2015 15 inch MacBook Pro and this is my review. So design wise, you can see that everything is pretty much the same here as last year. It's still got that symbolic Apple aluminum unibody construction, that's thin and light, that glowing Apple logo, same keyboard, that same beautiful and sharp 2880 by 1800 render display and the same I.O. so no USB-C. On the left you get the MagSafe 2 connector as well as two Thunderbolt 2 ports, uh, one USB 3.0 port and a headphone jack. And on the right another USB 3.0 port, HDMI output and SDXC card reader. You also get the same 720p FaceTime HD camera and stereo speakers that are loud and sound pretty good for a laptop. So basically there are only four new things with this 2015 refresh, the force touch trackpad, a new graphics card, faster SSD and a slightly better battery life. Uh, let's start with the force touch trackpad. Now force touch introduces some neat new features like uniform clicking anywhere on the trackpad, uh, which means that anywhere you press on it, the clicking will be the same unlike regular trackpads where it's usually just at the bottom. And this is thanks to that Taptic engine. So basically when you press on this new trackpad, there is a slight movement on the trackpad, but the click is actually produced by that engine. So when the MacBook is off, nothing happens. And you can actually customize the feel of the click as well as mute the sound. There are also force sensors that detect how much pressure you are applying. This introduces a new action called force clicking, which happens when you press harder on the trackpad. So you get the first click and then a secondary one that gives you a sense that you're going deeper in the trackpad. Now this can be used on a word to find out its definition, uh, to preview websites by force clicking a link, or you can also rewind or fast forward slower or quicker by applying less or more pressure on the trackpad. Now I haven't found myself using it much, but as applications start to take advantage of it, I can see it being a useful and neat feature to have. Now moving on to specs, I opted to go for the high-end 512GB model uh, simply for that uh, dedicated graphics card, but what we end up with are some pretty beastly specs. This Mac is packed with a 2.5GHz quad-core Intel i7 processor with Intel Iris Pro graphics, which is the same as last year, so benchmarks are basically the same but we do get a different GPU to last year. This year we get the AMD Radeon R9 370X with two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory, which from testing only offers a slight improvement over last year. However, the biggest improvement is the faster SSD, which is about two times faster than last year. And as you can see, we do get pretty damn good read speeds. Now translating all of this into real world performance, uh, this Mac is pretty much a pleasant experience. And in comparison to last year's model, you basically get slightly faster boot times as well as faster launching speeds. However, since sometimes the CPU can't quite keep up, uh, you will still experience some dodginess now and then like drops in frames when editing videos but everything else is as smooth as you can expect. Watching videos and movies is pleasing, especially with this display, and if you are into gaming, you'll be glad to know that this Mac handles games decently, which is pretty good for a Mac. So I regularly play some CSGO, SimCity, and Football Manager, and this Mac handles it fine, although you should expect the fans to really kick in even with graphically soft games like Football Manager. In terms of frame rates, uh, with CSGO I've been getting an average of around 65 frames per second and medium settings with the resolution at Full HD. In terms of battery life, the 2015 version offers a slight improvement over last year's model, uh, just of about 20 minutes or so. So I got over 8 hours watching videos and movies and just about 3 hours playing games. Now at the end of the day, this is a laptop, so portability is obviously essential, especially for someone like me who travels a lot. And so far this Mac hasn't been an issue to carry around in a backpack or by hand. And it's also pretty rigid, despite its wide and slim form factor, which is also reassuring. Now I bought this Mac to be my main computer, so as a design student and YouTuber, I needed to handle my editing and occasional gaming. And so far it's been a very pleasant experience, especially coming from an old 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro. Now is this the Mac for you? Uh, if you're indecisive and it's your first time buying a Mac, then it's probably better if you look at other options. Uh, if you are considering, really considering buying this Mac, then I would probably recommend you guys also check out last year's model at it, as it is cheaper and performance is pretty similar. However, if you do need these lightning fast read and write speeds, and you're a Mac user and you're looking for something to handle your editing, rendering and gaming on the go uh, and you're ready to pay that hefty $2,500 price tag, then this is probably your best and only option. 
So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was useful and informative. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comment section below or tweet me at TechSnackles. And yeah, thanks all for watching guys. It's great to be back and I'll see you all in the next one.